Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine Thursday? I have been, if you're here watching the live, you already know the story, um, probably. I've been rushing around like mad to get a video out today. It's coming out today. I'm so excited about it. I'm so proud of it. I didn't know if it was going to be able to come out today for sure. And then right before this live was originally scheduled to go live, I was like, okay, it is going to be able to be done today. So anyway, I've been rushing around. I'm a little flustered, but I do want to talk about, um, so yeah, the only reason I say that is just let you know, I'm a little bit excited right now because of that, but I should be able to calm down pretty soon. Okay. Mark should be, okay. Whew. Hello to, um, shout out to all the people here in the chat. Shout out to the members in the chat. I'm not going to do individual shout outs at this exact moment. Cause I'm already like almost an hour late for the first time I had put up. So I'm just want to kind of get a little bit right into it. Okay. What are we talking about? Okay. So let me pull up my screen. Not that different screen. I'm going to share my web page screen with y'all because this is kind of like a reaction to one of rabbit's videos. And I want to give a shout out to rabbit down the rabbit hole news because Rabbit's channel is the reason that I do even know about this whole thing even happening. I always plug her channel over here, but she does have really good content when it comes to this story. So I would say um, let's help her get to 50,000 by Christmas. I think we can do it. Okay. So like I said, she makes great videos. Let's see. Uh, it was a video. It's from last night. It's this one right here. It looks like I only watched this much of it, but I did watch the whole thing because um, I watched it on a different device. But this video she did put up last night. And as you can see from the thumbnail, it's Mark Leta and um, Tania, which is the mother of the child who Mark Leta had interviewed on his channel and then published or interviewed in his office, then published on his channel. And this child was exposed. I've made two live streams about that already. If you've missed those. So that's this, you know, that was a 13 year old child. She was child still is. I think she had her birthday recently, but like since the video came out, but still a child even today. Um, this is her mother. This is her mother. And so apparently this mother made a video addressing the Mark Leta soft white underbelly situation. And she's addressing some of the concerns that a lot of the public including myself, but many other, probably hundreds, if not thousands of other people, I really don't know, I didn't count, have raised with this uh, situation. Some of the questions that we raise, some of the issues we, you know, collectively as the people have raised, the ones that I've seen people raise, myself and others independently are, for example, who consented or signed the consent form for this little girl to be interviewed, basically, you know, um, unclothed or should I say pub the interview published but I mean I still I'm I'm going to be very careful I want to be very very clear first of all nobody send any hate any hateful comments any hateful messages any mean comments anything like that to anybody please don't approach anybody please none of that that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to give my opinion and commentary on a matter of public concern this is not legal advice I don't give legal advice to anybody ever just to to clarify that as well um, and you're going to know, you're going to see probably maybe in a few minutes why, I, why I needed to say that part. Okay. So this little girl goes on Mark's channel and one of the big questions people have, uh, has one of the big questions people, it's a weird construction is who consented for this? Because in the interview, this young girl, she does say, um, her mother lost custody of her several years ago. She was put into the system, I guess, assuming she was put into the foster care system. Um, also, another update that happened since the whole situation was um, Mark took the video down or someone, maybe YouTube, I don't know who, somehow the video got taken down and um, Mark re-uploaded it. But when he re-uploaded it, he did minimally, I mean... It's still pretty obvious, but he minimally blurred or censored out the chest area of the child on most of the video. There's a part of the video where it's not blurred apparently, or it wasn't at the last time I was informed, but I'm not going to go back and check. So I really don't know. I, I, don't, I don't ever want to see that again. Um, 
So Mark posts this, uh, this video of this child. It comes down. He puts it back up. It's now blurred, but he has it still available for basically for sale on his private soft white underbelly like Vimeo account website or whatever. So if you subscribe to the subscription channel, which I think is $10 a month, you could still conceivably, I mean, I guess I didn't go and check, but you could still presumably see that. Um, again, like I said, I didn't go and check. I don't know. Another question people had was, you know, how does this child's mother feel about it? Because Mark Leta did on the next day post another subsequent interview. And this time it wasn't with the little girl. It was with the little girl's mother, the one we just saw here in Rabbit's Thumbnail. Um, I'm trying not to say people's names too much because, well, I'll tell you all my reasons later, but this is who we're talking about right now. People were wondering and curious, what does she, um, think of all of this and what does she have to say about it and all that? Um, you know, there were other questions people had. Is this legal? Was one of the questions people had. I mean, there was all kind you can imagine. Well, like I said, the next day after the little girl's interview aired the first time, the follow-up interview with the mother uh, airs and then, or is published, I should say. And then after the follow-up interview, I think the very next day after that is when the original video was taken down and then re-uploaded, censored or whatever. Um, another thing that I found to be interesting or of note was that Mark in the original description box of the video had said that there's much more salacious content that he doesn't put out and publish to the public, which led a lot of people to asking, you know, me, which I don't know the answer to this, but a lot of people to asking me like, you know, what do you think if this is the, the less salacious stuff, then what do you really think is on his like hard drives and stuff? And like, I don't even want to think about it. I have no, I mean, I don't know. But he did say, even in that first video where he publicly posted a child talking about being a S worker and talking about like, I don't even want to get into details because it's so depraved in my opinion, but she's like minimally clothed and you could see her whole entire top of her chest area through her top. People are kind of freaking out. They hate it. Social work Reddit is getting riled up, which I mean, it spread beyond YouTube. And so there's all that, right? One second. The Vimeo. Oh, okay. Thank you. Tinkle tits. Interesting. So uh, we have an update. Uh, Tinkle tits McGee is on top of the reporting. They reported, someone reported, I don't know who, um, <clears throat> I don't know all the details. Someone reported. Uh, the private channel to Vimeo, which I think is, or Vimeo, I don't know how to say it, which is the video like hosting platform that allows, um, you know, it's like, I don't exactly know how the technology works or what the words are, but it's like they host the videos, like they have the platform. It's like not YouTube, but it's like a video platform or whatever where you can watch videos. But um, Mark's private YouTube uh, private website is like those types of videos. So the update here is like somebody had reported it to make sure it's compliant with the law. And then we're getting an update here. Uh, the trust and safety team emailed this morning, alluding to making sure it's not only compliant, compliant with terms of service, but also the law. So maybe the legal department has to look into it. Okay. Um, okay. So that's kind of the long and short of the story. Like I said, I do have two other entire live streams going over it. So if you want more details on kind of how we got to this point, you should probably watch those. Moving forward, everybody who's moving forward, we already know what happened with those or you don't need to know or whatever for you to understand or whatever. Okay. So then there start being these updates after that, right? This lady, the mom apparently was going, um, posting videos. Again, I don't want to like really like advertise because a big part of me <sighs> kind of suspects that this is a sort of publicity stunt of sorts on the part of at least some of the people involved in this story. And I want to be very, very clear. I have no idea. This is just literally a conspiracy theory speculation in my mind based on a feeling. I really have no idea. I'm moving forward with an open mind as I'm watching this stuff and taking in more information. But like, 
I got to be upfront that I feel like a little suspicious that this is some type of PR stunt or a stunt to like get clicks and clout or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have very strong evidence for that. So I'm not making any allegations. I'm just saying that's my feelings. That's my feelings. Not even my opinion. I'm just kind of suspicious. That's what I should say. My suspicion meter is kind of going off with maybe this might be a, a clout stunt or a diversion from something else. I really don't know. I'm suspicious of it, but um, even if it is 100% good faith, even if it is um, all true what's being presented to us, exactly how it's being presented to us, I still don't really want to like advertise a bunch of specific details about this child and her family members, like beyond what I need to, to kind of comment on what I think is really important for the public. Thank you, Bonnie Dwyer for the super chat. And also thank you, Tinkle Tits for the super chat, as well as your work on figuring out what's going on with the Vimeo thing. I know, I know he's too much. Um, okay. So this is the video and this is the video we're going to be respond or uh, reacting to and kind of watching together. And just so y'all know, after this live, I'm trying to time it so that this live ends and then we can go straight over to the Backstreet Boys BJ Investigates premiere. But I'm going to have to kind of check on it from time to time um, to see how it's going because it's still like being uploaded and things like that. So bear with me if you don't mind. It's Okay, so we can put it out. All right, so... All right, let me get a little bit through this video and then I'll have to take a slight break to kind of set that premiere up and then we can get back to it. But I want to I want to get some momentum going here. So I'm going to pull up the um guys, welcome back to Rabbit's video. So I have downloaded it, but it's like shoot, I thought I had her like thing on here. Okay, that's fine. So I've downloaded it, but it's that that live we just watched. And one of the things Rabbit focuses on a lot in her video is the issue of consent. Like who consented for the daughter, the child to interview with Mark? Was consent even required? I don't know. And if not, who consented for it to be published, for her name and likeness to be used? Rabbit focuses a lot on that, which I am going to obviously focus on as well as I am responding to uh, reacting to her video. But there's a couple other things I wanted to point out too. But I'm going to play her reactions in here because I do think that they are um, poignant and I think, and she brings up stuff that I did not think about, but I do encourage y'all to go over and subscribe to her channel so that you can, you know, watch it all through without my commentary over it. My channel. So, so for those that have been following the whole Mark Leda situation, I wanted to give you guys an update. Um, distasteful and, you know, we have been, Okay, so sorry, that was my edit. I and I think that's the only edit. I might as well one or two more. But okay, so I was trying to like kind of crop this so it looks a little bit less like meta because it's like me, then rabbit, then rabbit, rabbit, and then this lady. It does get a little bit less confusing, but this is kind of the best I could do. Sorry, y'all. All right. People have said a lot about what's been going on. And so I wanted to address this here because uh Tania made a video. All right, let's talk about what Tania is saying here, because allegedly she starts by saying that Mark Leda did not have any consent. No, this is a good point. And it is something that we, I think, have discussed as well already in the other lives. But consent, like, doesn't really matter in this particular case because there's you cannot consent to something allegedly seemingly pro possibly you know criminal so let's say like it is a crime which i don't want to get into my opinions but i will say people are innocent till proven guilty and accusing people of crimes isn't something i'm going to do until they're proven guilty but for argument's sake for the hypothetical it's like well okay you can't consent to something that's illegal even if it's you know you're the parent or whatever so who even cares about consent True, true, good point. But in my opinion, and I think probably maybe other people's, maybe not, but in my opinion, speaking for myself, it kind of does make a difference because it gives me insight into what the broader picture could be. Um, like, 
was the mom involved in some way, I think is relevant. Uh, did she give permission or did she not know? Did Mark completely blindside this mom? I think for understanding what happened and kind of piecing together the story, I think it's relevant. But yeah, like you can't consent to something like I don't think this is something she could have even legally consented to, but I don't know. And it's until proven guilty. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of where I am with it in my personal opinion. Okay. So let's see what else is going on here. To interview her daughter. Hey, y'all. Real quick, I want to address something. My name is Tania, and I did a soft light on the belly video. It went viral, and it kind of went viral because a lot of people didn't know that that was my get down. Like, that's what I did. And, you know, like that I went through those things in my life. So, Meanwhile, in that time, my daughter was 13 years old and she was running away at the time and she is a chronic runaway. So while being ran away, she started to see my video circulate and she decided that she wanted to. So Rabbit has um, sped up the video, the Tania video, and I kept it at that speed because I think like it's already going to be pretty long video that I'm making here. So she is. If you're trying to kind of understand what's going on and like read her like, you know, body language or her words or whatever, uh, she is sped up. So to me, the speeding it up kind of makes me feel like a little bit more distrustful because it feels like she's talking really fast because she's nervous, but she's not actually talking that fast. Rabbit had like fast forwarded it. So like, you know, don't hold it against her or whatever on that particular account, I think, you know, just to be fair. Get a video done herself. So she then got into the arms of Mark. And that is crazy because my intuition was already saying like, my daughter is going to want to do this because I was seeing, you know, the patterns of her and what she was doing and just running away and all of that stuff. And she ended up on Figueroa Street. So everybody knows that my daughter was prostituted. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. The Internet hates it. Like this part, for example, it kind of made me feel like I, I don't believe her. And a big part of the reason I feel that way, I think, is because she's talking so fast that it seems like it's insincere. I hesitate to show y'all, you know. Um, the ladies channel I really don't want y'all to go to it I don't want y'all to leave any comments at all I don't want y'all to like honestly like I don't really want to like send traffic to that channel you know especially in this case but um this is this is just what we're gonna get um I am curious as to like why she's like I don't like it nobody likes it Mark Diddley, the internet hates it it's kind of like I don't know. It just still seems like a little bit insincere. Like maybe it's because she's sped up. You know, I don't know. We all think that it's so creepy that Mark decided to interview her and without my consent. So people are thinking like, how is the video out? FYI, disclaimer, I was not there. I was not present when my daughter did the video. So since we know that, we could go to the next thing. So remember my... Let me slow this down a little bit. Um, she's saying, you know, she wasn't there. She didn't know... Um, it sounds like she's getting a lot of pushback and a lot of people upset on the internet because it probably was a lot of people who came up to her and were like, cause I saw, I saw some of the comments on Mark's channel and on that video and the original one. And it was overwhelmingly negative comments, criticizing comments, stuff like that. And I don't know. I don't exactly remember. I didn't take a, a tally, but it seemed like a large percentage of them were people saying, Mark, I usually always take up for you and defend you, or I'm not like this type of person where I'm going to criticize somebody's free speech or whatever, whatever. But people are being like, but you crossed the line. You went too far on this one. Like I saw a bunch of comments like that when I took a stroll through the comments of that video. And so it does just make me wonder, like, did this mother of this child deal with a similar sort of backlash in her own personal life or whatever, because she does say, you know, a lot of people didn't realize that the type of work that she, um, does is the type of work she does. And, you know, people were surprised by that or something. Um, yeah. So, so far I really, here's the thing. Like, I am biased because I want to be completely objective and fair. But like just starting out before I even laid eyes on this woman, I had this like a little tiny bit of like compassion almost because I feel like we could possibly be looking at a sort of generational cycle of just like little girls being abused and then growing up and like 
having to do whatever they have to do to survive and then, you know, whatever, right? There's like a part of me that feels like that could be what's going on. And and I want to like hold space for that and be compassionate and fair even. But at the same time, I don't know anybody's life story. I don't know what people went through in their past. All I know is that this child was posted in a very inappropriate way online that I'm not even sure should even have like been considered legal, but I don't really know. And it's until proven guilty. And I need to know who's responsible for that. And I think we all should, as we, the people know who's responsible for that. So I'm trying to keep a, you know, a fair perspective on it, but I like to, I like to, um, admit whenever I'm going into something with a kind of like a bias, but all those biases aside, I'm not really believing what she's saying in the first few minutes of this so far. I'm feeling like it's not fully sincere. She basically didn't really interject to what her daughter was doing with soft white underbelly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, okay? Intuition was itching, like, let me just let Mark know not to interview her because I had called him one time just out the blue and I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da, da, da. I wasn't per se asking him for money, but I was just like asking, like, do you know any opportunities? Like, you know, like you can. I feel like the word opportunities has kind of sort of started to mean similar thing to like photo shoot whenever like Lena the plug is like, oh, yeah, we did a shoot together. Like she called Mark out of the blue to ask if he knew about any opportunities, but she wasn't calling to ask him for money per se. I'm like, I do too. Like, what's up? So I was just. Yeah, them up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Listen to what she says. It's kind of fast, but there are captions. Let me make it bigger. She has little captions down there. Okay. Intuition was itching. Like, let me just let Mark know not to interview her because. I had called him one time just out the blue and I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da, da, da. I wasn't per se asking him for money, but I was just like asking like, do you know any opportunities? Like, you know, like you do film, like I do too. Like, what's up? So I was just networking. What did she say? You film? I missed the, called him up. One time just out the blue. And I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da, da, da. I wasn't per se asking him for money, but I was just like asking like, do you know any opportunities? Like, you know, like you do film, like I do. You do film. I do too, is what she said. Somebody did tell me, I think it might have been Rabbit, um, in form that this lady was on some type of show. Could somebody leave it in the, <clears throat> if Rabbit's here or somebody heard Rabbit say it or if somebody knows, there's like some type of reality show maybe she was on or something. I don't remember. Right. Also, she um, was dating a guy from no jumper or at least like internet dating like on social media saying that she was dating crip mac yeah no jumper but oh baddies of south central that sounds right let me see what is that baddies south central baddies now that's tv I'm not sure I could click. Uh, oh, no. I'm not sure I could publish this on this YouTube channel. Okay. I see what it's about, though. Whew, all right. So, um, yeah, right. I, it's very overwhelming to me because it's a little bit unsettling, in my personal opinion, that Again, and it could it could be because she's just you know sped up, so it making it seem like that it's making it seem like this more so than it really is or whatever. But it does seem like this is something she's talking about in a really nonchalant way, as to imply that this is like a normal way of life. And I do I do know that it is a normal way of life for a lot of people here and there or whatever. But you can't go out in the public on social media normalizing naked little girls on the internet. I mean, we got to put our foot down somewhere. We got to put our foot down somewhere. And even, even though I can hold space for compassion and stuff, that compassion ends where there's children being, in my opinion, exploited and violated and other things. But that's all I'll say for now, for right now about it. To like, what's up? So I was just networking and um, he was like, oh, I hear that your daughter is on the street. Um, 
if you want extra money, go find her so I can interview her. So I was like, you want me to recruit my own daughter? Like, I just got the worst feeling. Like, I just got the worst feeling rushing down the middle of my forehead whenever she said, so I could interview her. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe the moon is doing something. I got a bad feeling when she said that. Oh, um, it sounds like she's getting a lot of pushback and a lot of people upset on the internet because she basically didn't really interject to what her daughter was doing with soft white underbelly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, okay? Intuition was itching, like, let me just let Mark know not to interview her because I had called him one time just out the blue and I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da-da-da. I wasn't per se asking him for money, but I was just like asking, like, do you know any opportunities? Like, you know, like you do film, like I do too, like, what's up? So I was just networking and um, he was like, oh, I hear that your daughter is on the street. Um, if you want extra money, go find her so I can interview her. So I was like, you want me to recruit my own daughter? Like, die, creep. This is already bad enough that she's ran away. So if I find her, I'm not going to bring her to you. So I was like, and you better not interview her. So that's why. So let me slow it down a little bit, because if I heard her correctly, she said. I'm just kind of speechless, like. I don't know. It doesn't feel right. Something feels off about it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, I agree. Yeah, she said she didn't watch the video. So this is a Miss Pisces Dreams has a theory that I've seen elsewhere like just in comments and stuff if i recall correctly yeah i mean i've definitely seen this somewhere oh she's lying this is miss pisces dreams i'm sure she got paid her interview and her daughter's interview and i've seen this theory speculated postulated across the internet like the theory goes this this theory is that she did know about it and then there was more backlash than she anticipated but maybe she possibly originally just agreed to it for money or something. Wait, hold on. Oh my God. That is so disgusting. Oh my God. Reading the live chat. I'm not reading that out loud though. Um, I'm just reading some of y'all's things here. Okay, let's see what else. Let's go back a little bit, okay? My extra money, go find her so I can interview her. So I was like, because I had called him one time just out the blue. And I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da -da -da. I wasn't per se asking him. People are thinking like, how is the video out? <laughs> oh my God, it's like the Twilight Zone because I rewinded it a bunch. Now Rabbit's rewinding. <laughs> FYI, disclaimer, I was not there. I was not present when my daughter did the video. So mm -hmm. since we know that, we could go to the next thing. So remember, my intuition was itching, like, let me just let Mark know not to interview her because I had called him. Is it her intuition itching or is it because Mark literally said, find your daughter and I will pay you if you find her? <laughs> was it? I don't know if that's intuition, girl. That might have been just an actual heads up that it was going to happen. One time, just out the blue. And I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da -da -da. I wasn't perfect. I don't know who y'all is, banter babe, but considering like banter is in your name, I'm assuming you just do this, like you go and like start fights or whatever, but no one has come for this woman. You're clearly not familiar with this channel because you would know for definitely for sure if we were coming for her and that's not happening right now. I think we're being very sensitive to the fact that she's definitely a victim. So continue on with your night. Thank you. Love you. Mean it asking him for money but i was just like asking like do you know any opportunities like you know like you do film like i do too like what's up so i was just networking and um he was like oh i hear that your daughter is on the street um if you want extra money go find her so i can interview her so i was like so but she had already done a couple interviews with mark Leda, so i'm not really understanding 
how the daughter came about this situation. I've heard, I've, I've sat here listening to this woman with y'all like six, seven times, whatever, how many of it's been. And then plus on top of that, I've watched it a time or two before. And I still don't understand even what this woman is talking about. Like it's all over the place is I called him randomly out of the blue just one day, but he happened to know my daughter was missing and he told me to track her down for money. And I told him not to interview her. I had it in my intuition to enter to not to tell him not to interview her, even though she had a f- obvious warrant. It's just it's just a bunch of fast like words flying at me and none of them are adding up with each other. I don't know. You let me know in the comments if you believe anything that she is saying. Like you want me to recruit my own daughter like guy creep. This is already bad enough that she's ran away. So if I find her, I'm not going to bring her to you. So I was like, and you better not interview her. So that's why. It's so crazy how he interviewed her because he told me on that phone call, like, oh, no, I wouldn't um, put out anything without your consent. He goes, oh, no, I wouldn't put out anything without your consent. That was the key word, consent, because he knew he was going to try to get a hold of my daughter. But um, and, you know, that would be easy, you know, for him to find her because it's prostitutes and people that he worked with that recruit other girls. So they could just go find her. This feels kind of like. Uh, like a alibi like it would be easy for him to find her without me which I do believe actually too but you know just point out both sides it w- it would be easy for Mark Leta to find somebody he tracks down Rebecca he tracked down Amanda m- routinely whenever she was alive before she died and Lima Yvermovich's aura center or whatever care or whatever mm, just to clarify Lima has said that she doesn't own any centers, but it was an Aura center by her own definition. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, even after seeing it this many times, I really don't know. I'm like, oh, you want to have her interview? Da, da, da. So, um, I just couldn't believe it. He ended up getting in touch with my daughter. I was on live one day. And so while on live on Instagram, somebody said in the comments like, oh, wait till your daughter dropped that soft white underbelly interview, though. So I'm thinking like, oh, one of her little friends is chiming in and they're popping it that she did the interview. And I knew it. I knew that's why I told him don't interview her, because why would you suggest me to find her just to give me some money? You should be just on GP. Oh, this is a girl. You know, you care about it so much, right? Like you have all these go. You know what else? And I'm trying to be again. I really am trying to be sensitive because I am almost certain that. This woman is very young and has had to do what she's had to do to make it through life and survive. I really do think that. And I have, I do have a tremendous uh, amount of compassion and like empathy. But at the same time, I, I have to say, I think another reason why I'm kind of not really fully buying it is because I've known like this exact type of like fast talking bamboozler and it's like a very charismatic person who's pretty and attractive and mesmerizing in a way and you know fast talking and all these and I didn't do this because but and then and then this happened over here and I know that that's what happened because blah 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 blah, blah like you know like I don't know but- I'm not really saying anything, but that's because all of this is just based on my feelings. So I'm trying to make it very clear. This isn't facts. This is just what I think. It's like my feelings. It means and all these things going on, whatever the case may be. But like, you know, my daughter is really, really young and this is out of the norm. And here you go, interviewing her. Is it out of the norm or is it the norm? Because Mark Leta definitely had other videos on his channel called like 13 year old P-R-O-S-T-I-T-U-T-E or whatever. So it's not out of the norm for him. I guess it's a little out of the norm because I don't think any of them were under the age of 18 and also naked at the same time and also visible, but I don't know. I did not watch those videos. I've never clicked on them and I don't plan to. Um, So not really out of the norm for Mark unless you count like the wardrobe of it all. Um, Is it out of the norm for the daughter? Well, it sounds like from based on, yeah, look at Rabbit's face. I mean, I agree. Like the... It's almost like, you know, I want to believe. I want to believe her, but I just don't. That's kind of what it is. It's like, hmm. Yeah, the mother's in her 30s. I mean, she's very young. 
And she seems smart. She seems savvy and all that, but so somebody said it earlier, a couple live chats up, you know, at some point an, an inherent moral compass has to come into play. Like something like, in, like where we all can just draw the line somewhere and say, all right, no matter what someone's gone through, no matter what they have been through, there's certain things we're just not going to accept as a civilization. And one of them is 63 year old grown men posting or anybody of any age filming a child in this manner, posting it on the internet for the public to see to millions. Hello. Then taking it down and then making it privately available for perverted freaks. I don't, can we draw the line? But it gets worse. <laughs> what is out of the norm? Y yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all let me know. I, and it, to me, this is a very hard review to do because I feel like there's a disconnection between her and the situation that's going on. It could just be me thinking that way. I mean, let me know the, your thoughts in the comments. Crazy, right? So it gets worse because when I seen that comment on my live, I started saying, oh, if he put out a video of her, he's going to get sued. Next thing you know, he's texting me the next morning. Hey, Tania, I want to do a follow-up video. So that's how I ended up doing my follow-up video. But then he flips the script and he's then going to say, um, but we're going to put out the follow-up video, but then we're going to also put out your daughter's video too. I say, yeah, um, I heard that you interviewed her. Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to put it out. And I paid her a lot of money. I'm like, I bet you did. So I said, but I thought. So, so she talked to the daughter, the child. Oh, no. So she talked to Mark. Mark claimed he paid her daughter a lot of money for an interview. And remember, this lady said, don't interview her and all that, right? I don't know if she, why she's like regularly talking to Mark. Maybe that's, maybe that there's nothing to it. Maybe that's fine. If I remember correctly, there was a screenshot somewhere or something to that effect that said that um, he was planning to drop this. Like she was aware of this interview dropping. Well, if you're aware, then how is the consent working? And are you able to give consent given that, you know, the daughter disclosed that mom wasn't having any kind of rights over her? Let me just think about that. So two weeks went by and I really be waiting. I'll be making people. Yeah, this is another um, aspect of it. Oh, no, not that one. Hold on. Where is it? Who said that? Hold on. I had my little comment. Then y'all typing too fast. Oh, I don't see it. Maybe I accidentally deleted it or something. Somebody had posted, somebody had said a comment. Um, dang it. I hate when that happens. This is why I stopped doing lives. Okay, whatever. Wait, like I don't make decisions real fast no more because I used to do that and it didn't work. I'm like, okay, let me wait. He ended up hitting me up again. Are you still interested? Are you still interested? I didn't say nothing. He hit me up again. Are you interested? I said, you know what? Yeah, because it was so much going on with my daughter. Okay, I, I'm not exactly sure how we got here. I think I could probably watch this back like 14 or 15 times and still not really be able to like know exactly what she's trying to say. But at some point, Mark pesters her to death, according to her. And then she goes ahead and says, yeah, you can post the interview of my child to the internet, which as someone pointed out earlier, and I do agree, she should have never, she should have never agreed to that, especially in considering what the daughter was wearing. And then, and then she's going to try and get out of it later by saying, I didn't even watch the video before Mark posted it. I just told him, yeah, you know what? Yeah, go ahead, post it. Well, you're admitting to being a negligent mother who's not doing what's best for your child. You know firsthand because you went on a bunch of interviews on Soft White Underbelly exactly how that type of exposure can affect you as a grown-ass woman. You knew it could affect your child too. And as a mother, as a parent, you didn't go and want to watch. I don't care what trauma somebody's been through, to be honest. That's common damn sense. Before you sign for your child, daughter or son, to be on an interview on a channel with 5 million, you take a look at the video. Just take a, take a glance. In my opinion. That's just my opinion. 
she was online popping practices she was just like really just going him like how she does like she slowed down a little bit and she started posting online crazy stuff again so i'm just like um you know what i'm gonna sign off that interview so that people and see to me what she's saying there is my daughter my child was lashing out on social media at me for perhaps justified perhaps not justified whatever she stopped for a while so I was going to let it go and then she started back up again posting about me and I didn't want my reputation messed up so I said you know what this this is my interpretation of what she just said to teach her a lesson about talking about me to punish her for daring to talk about me publicly even though I can drag her across social media a child a minor that I brought into this world publicly I'm going to go ahead and let Mark put out some very humiliating shit that she'll never, ever be able to erase from her life. That's what I heard. I'm going to rewind it. Y'all tell me if that's what you heard. You heard something different. Leave it in the uh, live chat. He hit me up again. Are you interested? I said, you know what? Yeah, because it was so much going on with my daughter. She was on live popping practices. She was just like really just going him like how she does. Like she slowed down a little bit and she started posting online crazy stuff again. So I'm just like, um, you know what? I'm going to sign off that interview so that people could see that she got interviewed at 13 years old by this man. Period. I want to hear Rabbit's thoughts on this, but um, she was posting all kind of stuff, crazy stuff. And I said, you know what? I am going to sign off on it. Because to show that Mark interviewed her, why would she be retaliating against Mark for something the daughter, like it, do you see what I mean? It's like, even in that one sentence, it's two different, uh, caught like causes for the same effect or two different, yeah, reasons for the one action. She didn't pick a reason for the action. The action is, um, signing signing the consent which we've already established like she didn't even really probably have the legal right to do but we don't really know who knows right but she did in fact give the consent or sign off on it that's the language she's using sign off so she's admitting to signing off on it and she's saying leading up to that she's saying she was going crazy and she was popping off and i said you know what i'm gonna sign off on it then, right after that, she gives another reason for signing off on it. She says, because to show that Mark interviewed her. So is she mad at the daughter for popping off on the internet? She's mad at Mark for interviewing her. I want to be fair. Let me just one more time. Mom wasn't having any kind of rights over her. Let me just think about that. So two weeks went by and I really be waiting. I be making people wait. Like I don't make decisions real fast no more because I used to do that and it didn't work. I'm like, okay, let me wait. He ended up hitting me up again. Are you still interested? Are you still interested? I didn't say nothing. He hit me up again. Are you interested? I said, you know what? Yeah, because it was so much going on with my daughter. She was on live popping practices. She was just like really just going him like how she does. Like she slowed down a little bit and she started posting online crazy stuff again. So I'm just like, um, you know what? I'm going to sign off that. So what does it sound like she was actually mad about? That had nothing to do with Mark. That's not, you know, yeah, my child, she might post stuff on Instagram, but she's a child. You know you're not interviewing her. Interview so that people could see that she got interviewed at 13 years old by this man, period, point blank. And I need her to see, look what you did. And no shame in your game because you did it, but this is why you have to. This is how she's talking to the child, too, the 13-year-old. I want them to see what you did. I did I didn't do that at 13, but I did stupid stuff. Imagine like your mom is out here like throwing you to the wolves, putting your most stupid your brain ain't developed. On top of that, poor thing, bless her heart. She's very she's smart as a whip, but I tell you one thing, she doesn't have good role models. She's not really set up for success and she's still just making the best of it. And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, you know what you did. You know what you did. You did it whatever you know, you know, like why are you talking to your daughter like that? It's just sick. Be careful because now he has a digital imprint of you 
And she's showing that she knows exactly the implications of this. This old creep who she knows for sure is a creep in my opinion. In my speculation. Has a digital imprint of anybody's little 13 year old baby. Much less her own. Talking about. Hold up. Let's go back a little bit. She said. Hold up. I'm going to sign off. Hold up. She said because I used to do that and it didn't work. Let's start from there. I'm like, I bet you did. So I said, let me just think about that. So two weeks went by and I really be waiting. I'll be making people wait. Like I don't make decisions real fast no more because I used to do that and it didn't work. I'm like, she's kind of telling me she's a manipulator with that. Like I, I make people wait. I'm going to just make you wait. I'm going to make you. Why? Just if you already know what you're going to say. Like, okay, let me wait. He ended up hitting me up again. Are you still interested? Are you still interested? I didn't say nothing. He hit me up again. Are you So this is Mark Leda calling her, asking her, are you still interested? Are you still interested? Interested? I said, you know what? Yeah, because it was so much going on with my daughter. Mm -hmm. She was on live, popping Percocets. She was just like, really just going ham like how she does. Like she slowed down a little bit and she started posting online crazy stuff again. So I'm just like, um, you know what? I'm going to sign off that interview so that people could see that she got interviewed at 13 years old by this man, period, point blank. And I need her to see, look what you did. And no shame in your game because you did it, but this is why you have to be careful because now he has a digital imprint of you talking about being 13 on the blade. And I okay, so she signed off on the interview to, to what exactly? Who, who was supposed to learn this lesson? Was was a Mark Leda or the thirteen year old daughter, who by the way is fourteen? My understanding beats me. I, that's kind of what I spent the last little. Let's see what you say. Okay, hold on. That's what I kind of spent the last little like section trying to figure out myself. Thank you, Truman Show, for the super chat. This whole situation is physically making me sick. The audacity for this mom, the one who smiled and said, "My kid is just like a little me." To bleep her daughter out, I am so mad. I, I, and I can't say that I blame you. I mean, I do have sympathy and compassion for this mother, but to some extent, you know, only. At some point, I'm drawing a line, and I've drawn it. I hate it, right? This is where it gets worse. My daughter right now is incarcerated, so let me just speed it up. She's incarcerated. And this is giving conservatorship or jail. This is giving she was pushed to lash out or she was pushed to be doing something pushed i this is just get this is just tingling my intuition so sorry it just is she was put publicly on display to look a certain type of way to the authorities to the public like maybe she was doing something she wasn't supposed to be doing maybe maybe to set her up to be putting her in some type of program maybe like a youth challenge program or something like that and they and it's giving in my opinion set up She's incarcerated, but then they were posting videos with her today. So was it a 5150 hold? What was this incarceration? I'm just curious because I don't know. She's in jail. And basically, <laughs> she called me and I'm like, oh, babe, the soft white underbelly video is out. She's like, mom, what? I'm like, yeah. She's like, so you gave consent to him? I said, yeah, you did the video. She's like, so you gave him consent? I'm like, yeah. She's like, did you see it? I said, yep. Mind you, I didn't even see it yet. I didn't even see it yet because when I. She's saying that with the, the timbre in her voice as if it absolves her. As if it like allows her to absolve herself of any responsibility. I hadn't even seen it. I hadn't even seen it. You should have. You should have. What do you mean? You hadn't even seen it? Your baby daughter? in front of 5 million people on that channel posted by that man, please. First of all, I don't believe that. I think she saw it. That's just my opinion. I might change my mind as I watch more, but right now that's what I'm thinking. It's pretty disgusting. She didn't bother to see it. So that doesn't absolve her. In my opinion, leave your opinion below. I signed it off and I did my follow-up video. I didn't even look at hers because I didn't want to get heartbroken. I've been going through this for a little minute now and I couldn't do it. I cannot. <laughs> so she was too heartbroken to proof view the video, but not too heartbroken for the fallout that was going to come from the millions of people that had access to probably see that video. So she didn't see it. She didn't see it, but she said, uh, did you just 
she's telling the daughter on the phone. She's telling Nova. Um, yeah, this interview happened. Did you see it? Mind you, I hadn't really seen it. But she told Nova that she did see it. I really, really think that she's getting dragged on the internet and this is her, like, response to this. And I'm slowing it down and I'm not even going to edit my reaction. I'm just having the reaction this way because I I'm having to go back to understand what she's saying. She's going, you know, explaining a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So when I seen it online, I'm like, no, he didn't let her get interviewed in that bra like that. I was just so disturbed. I couldn't even look because I don't see her. And this part to me kind of doesn't really feel like fully convincing. I'm not fully convinced that she's like really sees the big deal about the bra thing. Like she's like, yeah, the little bra, like, oh, so disturbed. Eh. Like that, you know, when she's on fig, I don't see her. I see what she posts online and I barely see it because I don't want to look. And when she's on fig, like Figueroa, I'm just making another missing report. But yeah, like that's what that means. Like, I don't see her when she's doing that type of work is what this mom is saying. And L Boogie did bring up a point that I want to say I agree with because we don't know the truth. The mom could be being forced to do this for, for some reason herself. Could. Do I think that's what's going on? Is that like what's like, yes, that's what it is? No, but I don't know. I don't know. And it is just another possible, you know, theory or whatever. It was heartbreaking and so um my daughter then goes listen to this part you guys my daughter then goes mom i was lying in that interview i lied so much about you mom and this part is where i started being like wait hold on so she's incarcerated unable to speak for herself you just told me you were mad whenever she started speaking for herself in so many words you didn't want her to be doing anything crazy on the internet she gets locked up after this highly publicized I don't fill in the blank, disgusting display. And now all of a sudden that she can't speak for herself, she lied. She told you, mom, I lied. And it really legitimately is reminding me of Larry Rabb whenever he was like, yeah, and I talked to Amanda in the jail and she was like, do you really have a good place for me to go? And I was like, yeah, I really do. And she was like, really, really, do you do have a good place? Oh my goodness. And I was like, yeah, I really do. And then she was like, thank you so much, dad. I love you so much. And it's like, after a while, all these details starts to feel a little bit fabricated. I'm feeling the same type of tingles. I'm like, oh, she said, I lie so much about you, mom. And I said, girl, why was you lying? Because I know that she lies. But I'm like, why was you lying? Because I didn't want to show no emotion of being mad because then she was going to shut down. You know how kids are. They don't express themselves when you're mad now. So I'm just keeping it cool. So I'm like, girl, I'm like, yeah, that's why the internet is going crazy, you know, on me because of the things that you do, girl. You just be lying. I know. I know. She like, and mom, guess what? Listen to this. And he gave me 300, but he gave me 200 more because he told me if I want more, wear something more <sighs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. This part, what she's saying right now is, you know, Mark paid the little girl for the interview and 200 and this, that, and the other, like, sure. Um, maybe I don't have any problems, you know, believing that, but mom, I lied so much about you. And then she's excited to like share with her, like how much money I mean, I do think Cheeks McGee has a good point. The, that little girl wants her mother's love. Every child does. And that's the thing. Like so many people, including even a few people who were commenting on Rabbit's video and my video, it's like they refuse to see this child as a child. It's like because she has grown up in the way she has and has been subjected to the things she has and has been exposed to the things she's been exposed to and ended up in the life she is that somehow that she's not a 13 year old child. Like even the damn federal government agrees with that, with the child labor laws, y'all come on. You can't even get up to their level. The mother. So Bo says the mother wants Mark to look worse than she looks, which that could be it. Really? So that's why she wore that top his request he gave her more so at the end of the day they're saying i need to be in jail what i wasn't there and if i wouldn't
But you signed. He gave consent. Nobody wouldn't have known that he recorded my daughter. And she almost got me on this one. She almost got me on this one because I was like, wow, you know, I guess it's such a catch 22 because it would have been her word against Mark. And, and I was like, well, girl, self, please. First of all, even if it would have been her word against Mark, go tell the police, let them do investigation. Now, counterpoint, they probably aren't going to investigate Mark because that's probably their friend, but you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. This is a tricky one. She almost got me on that one. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe it was just because she was like literally just throwing all kinds of things out. And it was like, maybe that was just the one I was the most susceptible to. But then I was like, wait, listen, even if, even if it was the only way possible to tell the public what Mark had done. And if she was really, really that upset by it, which I don't believe she is because she is not acting upset. This is not how I would expect somebody upset to be acting. Okay. But it's just my belief. I don't know. People are all different. Even if it was the only way to tell people and she was very upset and she really wanted to and she couldn't go to the cops and there was nobody she could tell. Girl, the solution cannot be let the man post your naked baby on the internet. That can't be. That's just, no. Again, we end up at the irreducible ethical boundary. We cannot reduce it any further. No naked children online. That's where I'm drawing the line. For me, that's just my opinion. We'll see. It's yet to be seen if any authorities agree with me or not. Right now, it's just my opinion. So she gave consent, but didn't give consent? Point blank. It would have been in the archives. Mm -hmm. So people saying, oh, but you know, you could sue him. You could still sue. What was you doing? Interviewing a young girl without her parent. Agreed. If that's true, if it's true, I agree. With her nipples showing. Then took it off YouTube, put it back up, blurred it out. Just so sloppy. So when, and I, so when did she see the... And that's what I mean. Like, she's funny. She has good comedic timing. She's charis charismatic. She's pretty. She's, you know, quick. All that. But it's like, we still get to that bottom. We get to that bikini bottom every time. That rock bottom every time, which is, I, I can like, even like you. And think you're, you know, a good social media personality and all that. But I'm not going to be able to say, yeah, and then therefore it's fine that you consented or, and are admitting to con consenting, which we've already discussed. You can't really consent to this type of thing, I think. Uh, you know, we get to the same, we get to the same rock bottom. Interview because he blurred it at some point. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of research, which I should have done. Child, ain't nobody about to do no experiment on me or my daughter. In Jesus' name, period. I speak into the universe. I'm very powerful, okay? This is interesting. She said, ain't nobody about to do an experiment on me and my child. Why did she say that? I mean... People were saying that that was somehow directed at me, which I don't believe. I don't think that was directed to me because I maybe, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, tag me where I said it, but I'm sure I didn't say, I think I didn't say, um, Mark wants to do an experiment or anybody wants to do an experiment on this child or her mother. I don't, I don't think I said that. Maybe I did. Maybe I'm just having a amnesia, but, um. People saying she was talking to me. No, she's not. I don't, that's not ringing a bell for me. But maybe she went and, and saw somebody else had been saying that. Maybe it had something to do with the Amanda Rabb story. I mean, does she mention it? Like, I think she just says experiment. And she says something else about a cult, which I'm not sure I said anything about a cult either. So I don't think that's directed to me either. Experiment. Mark laid a soft white underbelly experiment. Hmm. Case subjects, case studies, experiment. It's an interesting word to use, right? 
I am and my daughter is not about to be in you guys' cults. Mm. It's not going to happen like that. Cult. Now, I thought that maybe, you know, you can't. And that's around the time where I was like, I want to believe her again. You know, I, I want for my own bias reasons for her. And this is why I tell you all my biases, biases. I want for my own selfish reasons for her to be telling the truth. I want her to be like dragging him about this cult. I want her to be talking about a cult. I want her to be saying Lima's in a cult or whatever, but she doesn't say that first of all. And she's not particularly credible in my opinion at this point. Um, even if she is credible, it's clear that her sense of what's right and wrong ain't the same as mine. So I'm not even sure I can take her for her word on what definitions of things are, you know, what's a cult to her might not be a cult to me. But, you know, little part of me wishes that it was like, you know, not the case. I recommend some help because people be having resources. You interview all these people. You have all these subscribers. I mean, duh. I'm the one that's more like skeptical on is it going to work or is it going to make my baby worse? See, that little, that little nugget right there, I'm curious about. Is what going to work or is what going to make this baby worse? something about experiments, something about cults, and then the daughter's incarcerated, but only temporarily, like she's out now. Or maybe, maybe she's not, maybe she's still incarcerated, but they're putting videos out to pretend like, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't even want to speculate, but the way they're trying to make it appear, the daughter's out of being incarcerated. Somebody asked earlier, what was she incarcerated for? I don't know. I have no idea. Because it's my baby at the end of the day. It's my child. I'm the mama. And I said what I said, period. So, you know, y'all get on my nerves. Yes. I, re I really appreciate this um, live chat, this live chat, the comment in the live chat. I can believe she is concerned and a hustler. Yes, that's kind of, thankfully, we can have a lot of beliefs at once. Um, if you guys have any legal advice, if you guys have any pointers or whatever, because I know y'all like to chew me out, but there is people out there that, you know, wants to help and really understands what I'm what I'm going through, really understands what I'm going through. It's somebody out there that really understands what I'm going through, man. And somebody who, you know, is not really just. And this part, I don't know if she's talking about like directing that toward a specific, who is the somebody? Does she have somebody in mind? Or is it just somebody, anybody help her? Um, I don't give legal advice. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to help her on that one. But I mean, if what she is saying is true, which again, I'm not particularly like believing what everything she's saying is true, but let's say, you know, benefit of the doubt, let's say it is true. Um, I think she could have some strong legal grounds against Mark, but she's going to have to overcome, in my opinion, I shouldn't even be speculating like this, but she's going to have to overcome the fact that she signed her consent, meaning she like knowingly knew that Mark was going to do it. And even if the legal consent wasn't a legal agreement legally, because she couldn't legally do that, it does show her state of mind as allowing it. And so how are you going to sue for something you allowed? It's going to be hard for her to overcome that in a lawsuit. Again, I don't give legal advice. I would not give legal advice in particular to somebody I've never met. Um, I'm, I'm not practicing law at the moment. This is not legal advice. She should go seek out an attorney if she thinks she has a case. Judging me. I'm a young mom. I love my child. This is a hard one, right? Because... You don't want, like, for me, I don't like parent shaming, especially online. You know, this is a hard age for Nova. Um, you know, I would be lying if I said some of us don't go through it, right, with your teenagers acting out or doing the most or out of control. So I feel for her in that sense. But I also feel like part of me says, like, okay, like, what are you? doing about it she says she filed police reports so she gave consent or didn't give consent we'll go back a little bit to that part um i'm not wanting to edit this reaction i'm just gonna have it in real time and upload it so you go see the mistakes and everything <laughs> as you see it um because it's just the raw reaction and i figured that some of you guys would have wanted that too um but yeah whatever i'm doing i do not recommend for her to do she's not supposed to be doing that does she lie? Yes, she do. Do I chew her out? No, I don't. You know, I just had a video call with her. We just had court today. She's supposed to get released tomorrow. All of these things. This part. 
This feels like another Larry Rab update, you know. The best thing that could have happened to Amanda was that she got arrested. How did she get arrested? She was assaulting her dad with a pipe. So it was conservatorship or jail. And then, you know, less than a year later, Amanda's dead. I'm not saying. I'm not saying anybody caused her death. The only thing I know about her death for sure. Hmm. It was not marked as a seizure disorder. But it's giving reminiscent of a public update about a child that a lot of people were worried about. It's giving reminiscent of a manufactured PR push where this person doesn't know if it's going to help her daughter, doesn't know if it's going to hurt the daughter. They're doing all this PR pushing. Sounds familiar to Amanda, but it could also be, like I said at the beginning, could also be a case of the clout chasing grifters. Could be. Could be. We've seen that with Mark before. I don't know. I don't know. It's so many things, you guys. It's so, so, so many things. And I'm like, when she gets released, then what? I'm still going to do my channel. I'm still going to focus on all of my kids. I'm still going to be the mother that I am. I'm still going to be the boss that I am. I'm still going to be beautiful. I don't know why it just insulted and offended me so much that she says she's still going to be the boss that she is. Like, the behaviors is nothing to be proud of. It's not giving bossy. It's just not. And that's with me holding, fully holding space and compassion for the fact that a lot of her circumstances is definitely not her fault. I, I 100%, 100%. I actually hope and wish the best for her. I truly do. Because part of me is just rooting for her. I like her. I do. But the behaviors, the cho the choices that she's making, it's not something to be pr proud of and bragging about. It's not. It's truly not. And that doesn't mean she's like irredeemable or something. I have hope and faith. But I was just so offended that she was like, I'm still going to be keep being the boss that I am. This is not the type of boss we need to be. We need to step into the divine feminine. And I know she knows what I'm talking about with that bendy on her head and talking about manifesting and talking about, no, I'm claiming it. You're not going to this, that she knows. She knows that this is not how she is supposed to be acting. And I'm just feeling offended by it. But I can totally see and have compassion and understanding for she probably don't know the trees from the forest because she's surrounded by so much chaos and so many people that have done nothing but take advantage of her, her whole life. I'm just speculating and I shouldn't because like I said earlier, I don't know what people have been through in their life, including her. And I'm still going to be a child of God, period. But um, yeah, I just want to clear that up. But you know what? Soft light underbelly, y'all, mm -mm, we are onto something because this ain't right. Y'all just got me plastered everywhere. I see me on blogs. Y'all be chopping me up. Y'all try to make me defamation of character. I am stressed out, period, because of this situation. And I need legal freaking help. I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. What do you guys think? Let's go back a little bit, okay? Because I really want to understand, and I might actually go directly to the video so I can pull the transcript and understand exactly what the hell she's talking about and what she's saying, okay? Um, so I'm going straight to the YouTube video and I'm gonna try to see if I can pull it. So in the transcript, it says, hey y'all, real quick, I want to address something. My name is Tania and I did a soft white underbelly video. It went viral and it kind of went viral because a lot of people didn't know that that was my get down like that's what i did you know like that i went through those things in my life so meanwhile in that time my daughter was 13 years old and she was running away at the time and she is a chronic runaway or a chronic runaway so while being runaway she started to see my videos circulate and she decided that she wanted to get a video done herself so she then got into the arms of mark and this is crazy my because my intuition was already saying like my daughter is going to do my daughter is going to want to do this because i'm um updating my 
Instagram stories to post the link to the video. So just give me a second. I was seeing you know the patterns of her and what she was doing and just running away and all that stuff. And she ended up on Figueroa Street. So everybody knows that's my daughter. Was prostituted. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. in the internet hates it. So at the 52nd mark, or at the 50, yeah, 52nd minute, 52nd mark, excuse me. That's where she talks about her daughter um, and the prostitution. What I would... I just want Tanea to know that this is not this her daughter's a victim. This is this is a victim. Okay? She doesn't have a period. It's just that's all there really is to it. Um There's no such thing as a child P R O worker. There's no such thing. It's a victim. It's not, there's no, like, it's like saying, like, child pilot. Like, no. You can't even get licensed. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I know there's no license, but, like, no. It's not, you, the barrier to entry is no. Choice. <sighs> I can't. So, figure out history. So, everybody knows that's my daughter. This is where she gets in there. That was prostituted. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. The internet hates it. We all think that it's so creepy that Mark decided to interview her and without my consent. So people are thinking like... She says right here, it's so creepy that Mark decided to interview her and without my consent. I stopped it right there. It says it on the closed caption. And without my consent. So people thinking she keeps going. Like... How is the video out? How is the video out? FYI, disclaimer, I was not there. I was not present when my daughter did the video. So okay. since we know that, we could go to the next thing. So remember, my intuition was itching, like, let me just let Mark know not to interview her. Because I had called him one time just out the blue. And I was like, yeah, Mark, you know, I'm looking for extra money. Da, da, da. I wasn't per se asking him for money. But I was just like asking, like, do you know any opportunities? Like, you know. Like this part right here is just, that's the part. I wasn't per se asking Mark for money, but she doesn't say, I didn't call him to ask for money. She wasn't per se, but if he would have been the one to give her money, it doesn't sound like she was about to say no. She didn't say, I don't want any money from him. I never have wanted. Mm -mm. I wasn't calling to per se ask him for money, but I was calling to ask if, you know, there was any opportunities. He films, I film to... I don't know. Is this, does this lady have an interviewing channel where she interviews people from off the streets or from somewhere? Um, what kind of filming is she doing? Because I don't think it's the type that Mark's doing unless she's trying to say Mark does do that type of film. I really don't know. It's, it's like a Pandora's box of mysteries with this lady for me. Like you do film, like I do too. Like what's up? So I was just networking and um, he was. And the fact she called it networking is very alarming and interesting like oh i hear that your daughter is on the street um if you want extra money go find her so i can interview her so how did he hear that her daughter was in the street unless she self-disclosed that that's my question that is my question too how did mark later just heard about it like It is possible. The man has ears everywhere, I'm sure. I was like, you want me to recruit my own daughter? Like, guy, creep. This is already bad. So she said, you want me to recruit my own daughter? Creep. This is already bad. And enough that she's ran away. So if I find her, I'm not going to bring her to you. So I was like, and you better not interview her. So that's why it's so crazy how he interviewed her because he told me on that phone call like oh no i wouldn't um put out anything without your consent and then like what like i wouldn't i wouldn't put out anything without your consent like it's such an ambiguous statement uh he goes oh no i wouldn't put anything out without your consent that is what she's saying that he told her oh no i wouldn't put out anything without your consent that was the key word consent because he knew he was going to try to get a hold of my daughter but um, and, you know, 
that would be easy, you know, for him to find her because it's prostitutes and people that he work with that recruit other girls. So mm-hmm. they could just go find her like, oh, you want to have her interview? Da, da, da. So um, I just couldn't believe it. He ended up getting in touch with my daughter. I was on live one day. And so while on live on Instagram, somebody said in the comments like, oh. So if y'all just joined, we did already see this part, but this is like rabbit going back through. I'm going to have more to say in just a minute. I'm like almost done posting about this video that's about to come out in 50 minutes or whatever. Wait till your daughter dropped that soft white underbelly interview though. So I'm thinking like, oh, one of her little friends is chiming in and they're popping it that she did the interview. And Wait, see, this is where I get lost. Hold up. And, And let's go ahead and find this information now while I'm in the middle of the soft white underbelly because I could have sworn that he said, I'm pretty sure mom knew. Now I don't want to put my money on it, but I'm pretty sure yeah. mom knew that her daughter was going to, that this interview would drop soft white. Okay. So rabbit is about to fact check. Okay. I don't, I don't remember this part. Maybe I didn't see it. Underbelly. Hold up. Cause I, I do remember that being a thing because this is hilarious and very funny and i've seen someone else say this too was like be careful y'all are always telling me to be careful for some reason or another reason and i'm i'm pretty careful that's the thing like sometimes this is side rant people are like telling me to be careful and gets on my nerves because like if y'all had any idea how, how careful i am um but i appreciate that i make it look so easy and effortless that you don't even think i'm like acting with any care um but somebody had said, be careful because I think this lady's trying to bait you to be her lawyer or something. Or BJ should be careful because I don't, I don't exactly remember. But it was something along these lines of like, I thought she was trying to, you know, trick BJ or whatever. And maybe that was like what planted that idea in my mind in the first place, even, you know, who knows? Are any thoughts original? But I have seen this elsewhere. I don't know if this is what was going on because I don't think she would have to bait me to be her lawyer. First of all, I don't act as anyone's lawyer. It's not like I on purpose left. I left the field of practicing law. So voluntarily. Um, So I don't represent people. So that's the first of all. And second of all, um, she wouldn't have to make this whole video and go through all this. If she wanted to get in touch with me, she probably could have just said, something in a comment she could have sent an email so I don't really think you know I don't really think um necessarily hold on sorry this this is directed at me thank you JJ for the super chat where's the receipts messages between her and Mark timelines of whatever she recorded and when they post yeah no receipts no receipts and not only does she not have receipts even just intrinsically with her own story, it doesn't add up. Like the, the arguments don't support themselves. Like they're not supported. The conclusions, there's different reasons for that. It just, yeah, none of your business is saying, I think she'll take any lawyer. I don't think it was necessarily, I'm, I'm saying, I'm taking this as if none is saying, I don't think it was directed at anyone in particular, just anybody that will help her. Yeah, yeah. Sounding like he's the new Mari show. And now they're using him as much as he's using them. But it's still not right because she's a minor. Exactly. And I've seen other people say that too. You know, she's she's in the streets and she knows what she's getting into. And she's doing it too. And she knows what she's doing. No, y'all. That's the whole point. She don't know what she's doing. That's why we have laws that separate children and adults. Because children don't know what they're doing. I actually can tell you that I know that from experience because I am a former child. So are you. You didn't know what you was doing to the full extent of all the gravity of everything when you were 13. And in particular, when it came to these SEXUAL relations. What is this? Thank you, Greg, for gifting a membership. If you got the membership from Greg. Make sure you give a shout out and a thank you. Shout out Greg for that one. Ah, <sighs> didn't Mari have, yes, and Dr. Phil too. Y'all know what I was watching today is that uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard 
Dee Dee Blanchard story, you know, she's about to get out. They letting her out on parole. The daughter, she was uh, sentenced to prison for plotting to, you know what, her own mother and all that. I was looking at that story today and wow, the red flags were blaring and blazing. They were blaring and blazing. And it just made me mad to look at all the red flags that people ignored and just like didn't ask any questions about. It's very aggravating. There was a follow-up. Yep. So let me show you guys what I'm seeing, okay? If you go to the um, December 8th, this is the interview, uh, Tanea follow-up. It says, soft white underbelly interview, portrait of Tanea, the mother of Nova, posted yesterday. So that was December 8th. He had posted Nova's interview on the 7th. A teenage, a teenage runaway in South Central L.A. Now, of course. Yes, this is a good point. Katie said it's all learned behavior. No one is telling her that it's wrong. Mark interviewing her justifies her behavior in her mind. I cannot disagree with this. Like the girl is only 13 years old. Like she hasn't been around planet Earth very long. And it looks like she might have been exposed to not a lot of different types of lifestyles besides this one. Well, that's not true, actually. She said she lived in Beverly Hills um, with her grandmother. So I don't really fully know the full story. I don't know who's told the truth, who hasn't and all, all that. But I do want to just kind of be fair. But I could see how, you know, this is what's the explanation. Um, I heard you mention a conservatorship. How does this play into this? Well, from what I know right now, it doesn't. The reason I brought up the conservatorship situation is because that was step one of Lima's advice on her website as to like how to get your family member into a rehab against their will. And step one out of six was conservatorship or jail. And it involved sort of catching your loved one committing a crime. Um yeah, or like not being able to take care of themselves or whatever. And in Amanda Rabb's case, which was someone who this actually happened to, who went through the conservatorship or jail step, she was accused of assaulting her father with a pipe. Well, that's complicated because Amanda Rabb in, you know, more, at more than one time accused her father of a certain type of assault against her as a child and also, I think maybe said something about a PED. I, I don't exactly remember, but she definitely accused him of being a mole Esther. So, um, you know, now he pops up saying she assaulted him with a pipe. She gets taken to jail. Uh, when she's in jail, they applied for an LPS conservatorship or they tried to. They were unsuccessful in getting it. And so what they ended up getting was court-ordered treatment, but the plan was conservatorship. A similar thing happened to Bam Margera, where they kind of caught him on the run or whatever. Like, he was free to leave and um, wasn't legally required to stay there. Or at least, at the very least, Lima was no longer his guardian legally because the guardianship had expired. Well, they're chasing him all over, traipsing him all over. Then you had him in Pinellas County, Pinellas County in 2021, right on Clearwater or whatever. And they were talking about um, he's schizophrenic and he assaulted somebody. But then whenever you actually look at the body camera footage, wasn't no assaults going on. It's almost like they just setting people up. And so I don't know if that's what happened with this child. Maybe she was out of control. Maybe she committed a real crime. I don't know what the arrest was for. I don't know what the incarceration was for, where she was in incarcerated. The mom did mention having court. I don't know if any of the things that she's saying is true. It's not giving context. It's not giving whether she knew or what. But this is where I was like, well, he posted it on the description box of your video that he was going to drop a video. <laughs> I knew it. I knew that's why I told him don't interview her because why would you suggest me to find her just to give me some money? You should be just on GP. Oh, this is a girl. You know, you care about it so much, right? Like you have all these GoFundMe's and all these things. No, I don't think Mark ever pretended or even acted like he cared about this child. I don't think he ever demonstrated that. I don't think he ever said that. And it's kind of like, you know, she's 
she's not wrong to bring up the talking point. You know, he does have all these GoFundMes. What are those for? But I'm not really sure that it supports the logical argument that Mark's lying about caring about her because I don't think he ever pretended to care about her. I don't think he gives two flying rats, you know what, what happens to this child. It's clear based on his behaviors, in my opinion going on whatever the case may be but like you know my daughter is really really young and this is out of the norm and here you go interviewing her but it gets worse <laughs> crazy right so it gets worse because when i seen that comment on my live I and this is one of the inconsistencies um moon dog says she told him not to interview her but gave consent and that's kind of her whole explanation she's saying well, I told him not to do it, but he did it anyway. And then I wanted everybody to know he did it. So the only way everybody could know was me to not watch the video he did and let him post it. And also my daughter was getting on my nerves because she was talking shit about me online. <laughs> then the thing about, I don't know if it's going to help her or hurt my baby and experiments and cults. I don't know what that is. The legal advice. I really don't know. I started saying, oh, if he put out a video of her, he's going to get sued. Next thing you know, he's texting me the next morning. Hey, Tania, I want to do a follow-up video. So that's how I ended up doing my follow-up video. But then he flips the script and he's then going to say, um, but we're going to put out the follow-up video, but then we're going to also put out your daughter's video too. I say, yeah, um, I heard that you interviewed her. Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to put it out. And I paid her a lot of money. I'm like, I bet you did. So I said, let me just think about that. So two weeks went by and I really be waiting. I'll be making people wait. Like I don't make decisions real fast no more because I used to do that and it didn't work. I'm like, okay, let me wait. Mm. He ended up hitting me up again. Are you still interested? Are you still interested? I didn't say nothing. He hit me up again. Are you interested? I said, you know what? Yeah, because it was. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know what comes out of this woman's mouth is true. If anything, but if it is true, that Mark Leta paid a child to dress in a way that was intentionally more revealing and paid her more money to wear less clothes. I don't think that's okay. I'll leave it at that. But again, I do not know if that is true. So much going on with my daughter. She was on live popping Percocets. She was just like really just going him like how she does like she slowed down a little bit and she started posting online crazy stuff again so i'm just like um you know what i'm gonna sign off that interview so that people could see that she got interviewed at 13 years old you know what squids what <laughs> what came through my mind when i was explaining that earlier was like i literally heard like an like I don't know, maybe like my dad, like like a like a stereotypical like Southern man's voice in my head saying, can't bullshit a bullshitter. <laughs> like when she's doing all this fast talking, like I heard like uh like that, like in my mind. I've heard so many people say that as a kid. It's like, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. But like I don't ever like feel like that's I don't like it doesn't resonate with me really because I don't feel like I'm a bullshitter, but like that phrase came to mind when she was like when I was talking about her saying all this stuff. It's like, what do you mean? Squid says, I agree. She comes across as a bullshitter with all these weird details and contradictory statements. So she did consent. I don't know how she could, given that Nova said that mom doesn't have any parental anything going on for her. So she consented for her daughter to be interviewed by soft white underbelly because in her thought she said well you know people can see that she got interviewed at 13 by this and people have said this we've said it throughout this live but um yeah she doesn't even we don't know but we're told she doesn't even have custody of this daughter so even if it was something she could even if it was a field trip she couldn't consent to it if that's true that she doesn't have any custody of the daughter that she lost it yeah, by this blank. man and I period point blank by this man period point blank mm -hmm. i mean her to see look what you did and no shame in your game look what you did no <laughs> no, no 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 but hey all right okay because you did it but this is why you have to be careful because now he has a digital imprint of you talking about being 13 on the blade and i 
All right. Hate it, right? Mm. This. So there have been a few other folks saying this too. The mom just kind of wants to get like a settlement or like do a lawsuit. And, and people do think that winning lawsuits is a lot easier than it is. Mark Leta's friend, Lima Yaremovich learned that recently whenever she lost in California and now has to pay my legal fees. Um, it's, it's not easy to just win a lawsuit. Like you don't just sue somebody, especially powerful and rich person like Mark, who probably has, you know, connections and stuff. You don't just sue them and win, even if you have a good case sometimes, you know. This is where it gets worse. My daughter right now is incarcerated, so let me just speed it up. She's incarcerated. She's in jail. And basically, <laughs> she called me, and I'm like, oh, babe, the soft white underbelly video is out. She's like, mom, what? I'm like, you think that's how she said it? Oh, babe. Oh, sweetie. Because that's not how she talks about that daughter to us. And when she does slip into addressing her by the first person and saying, look what you did. She ain't talking like this. So I find it highly not credible that she said, Oh babe, did you know your, your little interviews up on the white, the soft white underbelly? Did you know? No, I doubt that's how she said it. And if it is, then we got way bigger problems than what we already thought because she shouldn't have said it like that. She should have been mortified by it, but she, she alleges she signed off on it. Yeah. She like, so you gave consent to him? I said, yeah, you did the video. She like, so you gave him consent? I'm like, yeah. She like, did you see it? I said, yep. Mind you, I didn't even see it yet. So she hadn't seen the video yet. That's interesting. Y'all believe that? I don't, I don't believe this woman. I'm just going to say that. And this is, I'm just, I don't believe that she did not know. Okay. I didn't even see it yet because when I signed it for me, it's just that uh, there's no cohesiveness. There's no line down the center of the story. That's like, yes, it all grabs onto this center line. It's just a bunch of side quest rabbit trails. I, I don't know what she's saying. Oh, and I did my follow up video. So she signed off without watching the video that her daughter did. Okay. I didn't even look at hers because I didn't want to get heartbroken. I've been going through this for a little minute now and I couldn't do it. So when I seen it online, I'm like, no, he didn't let her get interviewed in that bra like that. I was just so disturbed. I couldn't even look because I don't see her like that. You know, when she's on fig, I don't see her. I see what she posts online and I barely see it because. I so she's on. <laughs> this is not a good video, but OK. I don't want to look and I'll just make another missing report. But it was heartbreaking. And so. Um, my daughter then goes, listen to this part, you guys. My daughter then goes, mom, I was lying in that interview. She posts a picture up of her daughter. And this, this is another kind of variation of, I think the last comment we just talked about, it's, I, I could see this being the case. The mom is so overexposed to this kind of stuff that she's desensitized to the type of thing. And didn't even really recognize it as wrong until all the outrage started. And it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me in some ways of the whole Adam 22, Lena, the plug situation where it's like they are so overexposed to that world that they're desensitized to it. And this isn't even me speculating because one of them, I think it was either, what's the guy who does like community? I don't remember. A, A something, not academics, someone else. He was on a podcast with Adam and he talked, you know, last year or something. And he talked about how he was desensitized to these types of situations and what he was talking about was consenting you know adults or whatever making the videos that they make over there but he was like just being around adam and lena and like seeing how they all like you know make this stuff and it's just in your face all the time he was like i don't even get bleep anymore i don't even get that feeling anymore because it's just i've just seen too much stuff and so there's now all these studies coming out about like kids and young adults and even fully brain developed adults who are overexposed to this type of like content and things like that. Um, it can affect your perception and what you see as right. Like it, it can affect your boundaries that existed before the overexposure, I'll say. Um, 
I'm not a scientist. Y'all can go look those studies up. I'm sure they're public. But um, it's reminding me of that, where it's kind of like, I do think without a very strong personal, like, ethical compass, where you have these, ir- like, irreducible, no, this is not right, it is easy to if you're kind of like, it's kind of like indoctrination or programming or whatever else. It's like easy to just kind of go with the flow and like, okay, well, if literally everybody that I know is like acting like it's not that big of a deal, like Adam and Lena, right? All their friends were having them on their podcast and being like, huh, people are really freaking out about that. Huh, huh. But nobody was saying like, no, dude, it's fucking depraved and it's disgusting and you shouldn't have did that. No, like no one's really telling you that. So when you see the outrage online, it might come as a surprise. It might be like, oh, yeah, like a wake up call, like kind of shaking you out of that perception or perspective that you have. And just like, I don't know, like in my opinion, I think I think I'm right. I think naked kids should not be online. And so, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. I think I'm right on that one. And that's where it kind of always comes down to the rock bottom. She's crying. I'm assuming this is where she's at in juvie. Mom's got to save face. Tanea says, I was lying in that video, in that interview. Lying about what? Lying about you? I lied so much about you, Mom. Mm, no, no, no. I'm like, oh. She said, I That also just doesn't sound like realistic. Like the tone doesn't sound realistic. The context doesn't sound realistic. I don't think this conversation with those words would have been had with that tone. That's what I'll say. I lied so much about you, mom. And I said, girl, why was you lying? Because I know that she lies. But I'm like, why was you lying? Because I didn't want to show no emotion. I agree with this. I completely agree. Let's see. Brajesvari Devi Dasi. I don't know how to say that. I agree. I still feel like Mark should be held accountable for making the video in the first place, consent or not. Agreed. There's a lot of blame to go around here. Definitely, he should be held accountable as well, 100%. Of being mad because then she was going to shut down. You know how kids are. They don't express themselves when you're mad now. So I'm just keeping it cool. So I'm like, girl, I'm like, yeah, that's why the internet is. AB says, even if it was your life and you're now an adult why would you do that to your own child knowing the pitfalls and that's kind of another place where it comes down to for me the mom said you can learn your lesson i'm paraphrasing because this man is going to have a digital imprint or footprint of you for the rest of forever and you need to learn your like the mom knew she admitted that she knew the pitfalls and like the exposure uh consequences and all that risks it's going crazy you know on me because of the things that you do girl you just be lying i know i know she like in my this is kind of like indisputable right here mark is always bragging about how good his family was growing up and how perfect his mommy and his daddy were and all that and how they instilled values in him and it's like they obviously did not Because if he had values, he would not be doing what he is doing, in my opinion. But uh, what is it? There was son said Mark should a thousand percent, 10,000 percent be held accountable because unlike the child's mother, he does have a healthy frame of reference. Thanks to his upbringing, he knows better and period. That's indisputable. It's indisputable. He he's said this himself. That he had such a, such a great upbringing and such loving parents and all that. Um, guess what? Listen to this. And he gave me three hundred, but he gave me two hundred more because he told me if I want more, wear something more. This is child abuse. No one can consent to it. Agreed. I mean, in my opinion, we don't know innocent until proven guilty and stuff. Revealing. So that's why she wore that top. But you consented to the interview without having watched it, right? Because my heart was, I get it, your heart was broken. His request, he gave her more. I can't. So at the end of the day, they're saying, I need to be in jail. What? I wasn't there. And if I wouldn't have gave consent, nobody wouldn't have known that he. Now, this is a separate issue. 
Could she legally consent? We don't know. Because first of all, we don't know if she's the legal guardian. We don't know if she lost custody or guardianship, whatever. Second of all, uh, I'm not sure you anyone can consent to this, right? So we we all agree. But I do think it is true that Mark did ask her specifically or discuss with her before, like he probably did to clear his own conscience probably did ask her for some type of consent if I had a guess and I do think if she would have actually said hell no are you out of your mind you are not putting my child on your sick channel what I do is what I do don't bring my daughter up to me again and if I see her on this channel I will figure out how to sue you if she would have said something like that I'm not sure Mark would have posted an interview, but again, I don't know. It's just, I'm just guessing. I don't know. I was not there. I don't know these people. Recorded my daughter, period, point blank. It would have been in the archives. So people saying, oh, but you know, you could sue him. You could still sue. What was you doing? Interviewing. So now she's trying to say she wants a payday. I could still sue though. Ha ha. Like, I don't know. Could she could be in cahoots with Mark on this. It could be a PR stunt. They both coordinated or. This could be her really trying to lash out at Mark, which I don't think this is going to work, but who knows? It could. Maybe maybe a lawyer will take her on. I mean, I do think there's probably people out here who want to get Mark any way they can in the courtroom, so maybe. Um, Cleopatra says, parents go crazy with greed when they know they can make money off their child. We've seen it over and over again with famous and non-famous kids. And this brings me to the video that's going to be premiering in about 25 minutes on BJ Investigates. The link is in the pinned comments. Um, there's some of this going on with the Backstreet Boys. And after the Backstreet Boys, we're going down a whole twisty, windy turn. I basically am going straight through the Jive Record Company uh, playbook. We're going to Sony. We're, we're going to Bad Boy. We're going to Zomba. We're going all over the place to see all the parents who just put their kids up. All right, let's see what y'all are saying here. I wonder. Okay, here's one theory. I think that the mom, Mark, and the child all knew about the interviews. But now everyone is mad and the adults have to backpedal. The girl just wanted to help her mom? I'm wondering. Help her mom with what? I, no, she was coming out against her mom because her mom was spreading narratives about her. And she wanted to correct those narratives, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's this too. I don't even know why she even made this video. It don't make any sense to me. Uh, I don't know. I really do not know. I really don't know where the mom is. She has a couple more minutes left. Let's see. Maybe just one minute, maybe less. A young girl without her parent, with her nipple showing, then took it off YouTube, put it back up, blurred it out. Just why were you consenting? That's another point too. Like to me, it's like I don't know, you guys. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be understanding of the situation. And please note, I am. Um, but. This is what she's saying. Now, Mark is not having given a statement um, at this point to me. These and he probably won't. The man don't give statements from what I could tell. Both her and Mark are no better, right? Actually, he did give statements when it came to um, Kelly. He appeared on screen with Kelly, remember? Mark very well knows how to upload a video, knows what to do. You know, he's a photographer, can key into certain details about things. He knows what he's doing, right? So he is no um, without guilt in this situation, okay? Very much so. But mom is definitely with guilt here as well. And I feel like the only reason why she's saying anything right now is because the internet is dragging her. That's why. It's because the people are dragging her. That's why. Um, that's just my thought on it. I wanted to bring this. And, I mean, let me know your guys' thoughts on it. It's just sad, you know, shame on her and shame on soft white underbelly, both of them. I don't know. I'll see you guys on the next one. Rabbits out. 
So that is that. Um, reading some of y'all's comments here. Mark needs to be held accountable. End of story. Mom is just bearing herself no matter which way you slice it. I think she became another bad mom statistic. Has anyone reported that video to actual authorities? Yes. To my understanding, people have. I have also reported it. I personally reported it to the FBI, but there's lots of places I guess you could report it to. Um, I know, or, you know, someone told me they, in a comment, they had reported it to the DOJ. I think there's also like trafficking hotline. Some people were saying report it to CPS, but, um, to my understanding, she's already a product of the system. Like that's how she got, that's how she got in this situation. Yeah. I mean, daughter stealing her. Yeah. That is one of the things that the child did accuse the mother of being jealous of her and like always being jealous of her. The FCC. I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. Um, mom loves being legendary. A legendary boss. I watched all three videos today and OMG, wow, the daughter is the mother almost verbatim. And the mom said she grew, she did say this. The mom literally used the term groom when she described her treatment of her daughter. She said she groomed her. The system is, yeah, it's sad. And it really does come down to like, I don't, don't even get me, don't even get me started. Yeah, Peace at Dawn says teenagers have strong emotions. For the mother to publicly share her problems with her daughter on the internet shows how immature she is. This poor girl deserves a better mother figure. It's true. And a lot of times you end up in these situations where it's like, you know, I am the mother and you are the child. And it's like, that's something people really like to say whenever they're doing some messed up stuff. And it's like, it's kind of true. And that's one of the things that came up in my research today about the Rose Blanchard case is that she, she really couldn't escape because she was a child. You know, her teeth were falling out. Her teeth, nothing was wrong with her. The doctors couldn't find anything wrong with her. Her teeth were falling out. Her hair, the mom was shaving her hair, making her wear these clothes, lying about her age, forging birth certificates and stuff to keep her appearing to be under the age of 18 for like three or four years longer than she actually was under the age of 18. She tried to run away. She tried to escape. She went to this like Comic-Con type of convention, like a cosplay convention. And um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard did. And when she went to this cosplay convention, she met a man and her and the man went to a hotel and it might've been a hotel they were at or whatever, but she was in a room with him and the mom, the Munchausen by proxy mom, allegedly, uh, who rest in peace or whatever, she tracks down Gypsy Rose and the man and Gypsy Rose at that time was like, I think she must've been like 20 years old legally, but the mom came in, w busted into the room or whatever. Maybe they opened the door. I don't exactly know, but the mom had the fake birth certificate and she was threatening the man with it. And she was saying, I'm going to tell, I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to tell them that you are abusing a disabled child who's under the age of 18. Here's her birth certificate right here. She's mentally ill. She lies. And the guy wanted nothing else to do with Gypsy Rose even ever again. And she just did an interview because, you know, she's getting out and, and I'm next this month, actually a couple weeks or less. And she did an interview with Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil last month. And she told him that her mom would tell her, um, even after she was 18, she would say, you can't, you'll never be able to get away from me because if you try to tell anybody that I did anything, I will say that you are lying. And I have all the paperwork that goes back your whole life saying that you are so mentally messed up and incompetent. No one's going to believe you. And this poor girl, I mean, she don't know teeth at this point. It was bad. It was bad. And it's just like, I just hate to think about it because there's, 
there's some in me that just refuses to believe a mother can do this. And I think that is a big reason why people get away with it. Because they got evil, evil mothers out there that hates their kids, that sees their kids as a competition, sees their kids as uh, the enemy, and not only don't take care of their kids and nourish them and protect them, but actively try to tear them down. And we've seen this James Parnell Spears, for example. That's not a mother, that's a father. I don't feel like Lynn hates Britney. I feel like Jamie Spears hates her. Like, I feel like he hates her and all that hatred in his heart is why his leg had to be cut off, in my opinion. But what do I know? Where are the social workers? The child is going to get locked up and put in juvie instead of getting the help she needs. I really don't know the answer to this consent question. Once Dr. Phil becomes involved, one knows situations are going to never end well for anyone. I mean, Bam, he was involved with the Bam situation. He was involved with the Britney situation in 2007. He was. He went on the news talking about her. Um, she was sub yes, and j yes, the Gypsy Rose Blanchard uh, story is that she was medically tortured she was subjected to like all kinds of different medical treatments testing interventions all of her stuff that she did not need um her mom would put topical numbing agents on her mouth to make her drool it like her saliva glands would be like over producing or whatever and when they would go to the dentist she would like load her up with this numbing stuff and she told the dentist that gypsy rose blanchard's salivary glands were dysfunctional and they were completely fine and they did a surgery to remove them they took her saliva glands out so the fact she didn't have saliva glands and she was on this seizure medicine which she also did not need it made her teeth start falling out yep did y'all know that gypsy rose's father was 17 years old whenever uh Dee Dee got pregnant, but Dee Dee was like 24 years old. She's like five years older than Gypsy Rose's dad. And then when they went, you know, he left her. He said he woke up on his 18th birthday and he was like, uh uh, I can't do this. Is not, I'm not in the right place in life. And he left her, but he wanted to stay in Gypsy Rose's life. So then the mom takes Gypsy Rose, keeps her away from the dad, even though he wants to see her. Um, the dad that, I mean, frankly, he was 17 whenever he impregnated her and she was over the age of 18. So figured that out. She was like five years older. Um, but then she would go and tell cops like um, he was a abuser and don't tell him any information about her and all this stuff. And it just sounded very, very familiar to another mom that we've seen lately that just makes up fake diagnoses and withholds medical treatment from her child and um, lies to the cops because the woman would lie about Gypsy Rose's birthday. She would lie about her own birth date. She would lie about her name. She changed her name to avoid legal um, responsibility for things. And it just, it's like, wow, what a, what an interesting, exactly the same pattern to have noticed in more than one place. Bad Behaby, she was on Dr. Phil. Yes, she was. Cash me outside, girl. How about that? Liars need to change their story every 10 seconds. And it seems like it. You Then you've got the other mom who wasn't doing anything but get her daughter help. And then they made out like she had. I don't know what this is about, Leanne. Yeah, I know, huh? She somehow convinced the doctor to give her the surgery. Yeah, and she had a feeding tube, too. Yes, she did. And they got all this free stuff. They got a free house, two free houses. Because at one point, they were living on, like, government, um, in government housing in New Orleans, well, in Slidell. And Katrina, like, messed up their government housing or whatever, so they moved to Missouri. And then Habitat for Humanity built them a house. And so they got a free house. And it was all you know, fit it up with ramps and all this stuff because they were saying that the daughter was disabled. And honestly, probably by the end of the whole thing, she probably was pretty frail, pretty weak. She wasn't allowed to walk. Her mom first, she started making her uh, use a, like a walker. And then Gypsy Rose was riding uh, motorcycles with her grandpa and she fell off the motorcycle or something. She scraped her knee and she was fine. But after the, she scraped the knee, 
Dee Dee made her start riding in a wheelchair for the rest of the time that she was alive. She had to ride in the wheelchair. She had to be in the wheelchair. And then whenever they would go out, Dee Dee would hold Gypsy Rose's hand really tight um, and like squeeze it and like hurt her if she would say anything, you know, outside of the what happens in the house stays in the house world or whatever. I hear that. Oh, thank you, Wim. Wim has gifted five That Surprise Witness TV memberships. Thank you. Shout out, Wim. Make sure to thank Wim if you got one of those gifts and even if you didn't. Yeah, and then she had to go to jail. Listen, I'll get into all my thoughts and opinions on that in that video. You are told your mother loves you, so you don't know any better till she was old enough to finally get it. She is a psychopath. My mother was like this. Okay, so... Right. Like, and that's another thing too, is like all these people are saying, no, you know, your mom loves you. And then the mom's saying, I love you. I can't believe that Mark would put you on his channel like that. I can't believe that he would do that to you. Did you see that your video is up? And it's like, well, I mean, she says she loves me. So I, I guess that's how people who love you act. I mean, your mother is your very first relationship of life, period. So it's kind of like, if your mom's saying that's what love is, I was gifted, yes, Oracle got a membership. Dee Dee's family hated her. I think they flushed her ashes down the toilet because no one wanted her. She was accused, her own father and um, stepmother accused her of poisoning the mom with Roundup. So like uh, her, Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose moved back in the house with the dad, uh, with Dee Dee's dad whenever Gypsy Rose was like a month or two old like very young um and during that time Dee Dee's stepmom so Gypsy Rose's you know grandma for all intents and purposes started getting real sick she had these chronic illnesses all kinds of things were going on and um the dad and the wife they confronted Dee Dee about it and they said excuse me um have you been poisoning her and she, I guess, didn't like that, and they eventually ended up moving out or whatever, but once they moved out and the dad and the wife were left back to their own devices in their house, the wife just miraculously got, made a miraculous, like, pretty much immediate recovery. So, it kind of was, like, speculated that she was actually poisoning her, which makes me wonder, was she poisoning Gypsy Rose's food? But, I mean, she kind of, she was poisoning her, really. I mean, she was lying and saying stuff was wrong with her that wasn't and giving her medications every day that she did not need, which I think is poisoning. If you don't need a medicine, it could hurt you, right? I don't know. Okay. Um, no one cares about your opinion, girl. Goodbye. Who else's opinion don't I care about? People like, it's really still, it blows my mind, y'all. We live at a time in human history where we are like immediately accessible to people who maybe in the past you would have only been able to like pay for tickets to see somebody like that, you know? And it's some of these little um, NPC types in my comments sometimes where it's like, really, honestly, you should be paying money. You should be paying money to even be able to see me. But we live in a time where you don't have to charge money for that. And then they come in these comments saying anything and it's like, I will immediately hide you and you'll never have access to me again. It just blows my mind. Now the mom gets to totally discredit the child. And that is what she did. Let's see. I would go to prison if anyone tried to see my... I'm just saying. And it wasn't even pasties, girl. It was not even. It was completely visible. Was. It's been blurred now. But if you pay $10 a month, Mark will sell it to you. The Hulu show about this story was good. It was good. It was that series. It was pretty good. Uh, Hulu did a show about it. I, I think it was on Hulu. This one's called The Act. Yes. Thank you. Shout out, Wim. Mommy Ned and Dearest made me feel really similar to how Bad Surgeon made me feel. Oh, I don't know that. I don't know that movie, but I will say um, Frances Bean Cobain named, in this public information, named her, one of her trusts after something, 
a reference to the Mommy Dearest movie, which made me want to go watch it, but then I forgot about it till right now. What does this say? Dorothy Ann said, Mark is slick and disgusting by changing the thumbnail to showing her chest just barely blowing, blurring her. His thumbnail before was just her face. This is a FU to reporting of the video. Yeah, I think that's probably true in my opinion. He's trying to just be as depraved and perverted in my opinion as possible. And now it's like, nah, 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 nah. I am a demonic clown who wants to rub it in your face that I was alone naked with this girl, this child in a room and there's nothing you can do. But that's how I take it as a big to us who have a problem with it. That's how I take it. But I mean, girl, not everything's about me. So who knows? I mean, he does have 5 million subscribers. It could be about anything. She shouldn't have gotten jail time as a juror. I would have voted not guilty. Yeah, the Hulu movie was named The Act. Your mother's supposed to love you more than anyone. And that's pretty sad. Because if this is the person that loves this child more than anyone, that's pretty sad. And it just can't be right. And you know what? It sucks that she has to go through this. Like, you know, that's pretty much reducing it. Um... But I'm hoping that she gets out of that and she realizes that this this was dysfunctional, how these people were acting. Because I think she probably does actually know that. AB said, nah, mom is lying to cover herself because the authorities are probably looming. And that is true. If it comes down to the cops want to hold somebody responsible, it's going to be a lot easier to hold that mom responsible because she's going to have a lot less resources to be able to protect herself, unlike Mark Leta, who is a rich, powerful man with connections in L.A. His leg was harboring all the hate and nastiness and the docs had to take it off. Yeah. Oh, man, he's disgusting. Thank you for the super chat, Leanne. Beata Kowalski? What is that? The more I know, the more I distrust people. Let me see. Beata Kowalski. What does that mean? Oh, take care of Maya. Oh, yeah. A lot of y'all were asking me to cover that. I, it's like not a story that I have been able to, to breach just yet. Um... Have a great, amazing time, everyone. One love. Have a good mother and child. I'm praying. I have to go be a good mother. I'm in prayer, working harder to be present and loving. Yes, that's great. That's awesome. Oh, thank God. Bye, slays on. Um, okay. So we do only have about, you know, a few minutes, a couple minutes before we have to go to the BJ Investigates premiere, but. Someone said there's a new Twin Flames. Girl, I haven't even watched the old Twin Flames yet. I did start it. I want to tell all from Frances Bean so badly. Did y'all see she just married Tony Hawk's son? Who's gross and weird? Is it Mark? Who? He reminds me of a creep that I hope I never know. <laughs> he is slick. I couldn't comment on his video after rabbits dropped. I went to comment and an error came up and then later it was reposted with comments off. Yes. Yes. That's the name of it. This is public info. No more wire hangers. No more wire hangers is what it was called. Deidre said, I still want to know if the mom is getting kickbacks from the private page to still be able to see the interview. Who knows? Yes, Trailer Park Pundit. He is creepy, in my opinion. We are in the Upside Down. You know what? Off topic, I think the child may... Uh, mm -mm, nope, not reading that out loud. Mm -mm, I won't be advertising that. If you want... Amy said, if you want another rabbit hole... That is a scheme like the conservatorship. Look into medical abduction by means of medical child abuse. I've, I have heard about this before. People have um, brought this to my attention. And it is just kind of another like super deep rabbit hole that I just haven't 
have the courage to jump into yet. Yeah, Mark will likely not get in trouble. Yeah, she, Gypsy Rose went through so much. Brittany involved can be held accountable. Five dudes go and check. You can join it. Yes. It is linked in the chat here, right here. Y'all can click on that one. We're going to make our way in about one minute over there. I live in Pinellas County. Used to work in social services. That documentary broke my heart. Oh, God. It's Pinellas County. <gasps> That's where they tried to put Bam into that conservatorship. Failed. He was in a conservatorship in um, Arizona. They tried for Pinellas County, and it didn't go through. They didn't actually get it, but... Is Twin Flames a TV show or a YouTube creator? So, oh shoot. What am I doing now? Oh, it's frozen. My thing's frozen. Okay, I fixed. Okay, um... Oh my God, oh my God. Y'all are just telling me all kinds of... I used to live in Pinellas County... Pinellas County is interesting to me. There's always something going on over there. There's always something amiss. I used to live in Pinellas County when I was in nursing schools. No funding for anything there. Yeah. Oh, the Twin Flames thing. All right. I'll answer this. Then we got to go to the other premiere. Um, This Twin Flames thing, it was like some type of, it's being called a cult. I have not done any, like, really any research on it. So I'm not 100% sure. But it's a cult and uh, allegedly being said... And um, they made a documentary about it. The people got in trouble. Maybe there were some deaths involved or something. But there's like a Netflix one, I think, series. And I started watching it, but I, I made it in like just a few minutes before I had to go do something else. Uh, speaking of which, I'm about to have to go do something else. So uh, click on the video in the pinned comments or in the one that Monica just put in here. And I will see y'all very, very shortly at the Backstreet Boys BJ Investigates premiere that's happening right now. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, Mina. Okay, bye.